All right, Scott, thank you. New this morning, we're helping to get you motivated to get your home organized. Something I need, we were talking about, I need help with. I need help and motivation, let's be honest. Yeah. Cleaninginstitute.org surveyed a bunch of people and found that 69% of them plan to spring clean this year, but that is down from last hmm. year because 78% last year said they did plan to spring clean. The survey also found that 55% of people have been cleaning more than they usually do because of COVID. Of course, we want to keep everything extra sanitized now, but spring cleaning, also a way to get rid of the clutter around the house. This morning, a professional organizer giving us some helpful advice on where to start and how to part with things you just don't need anymore. As far as where you would start, it would be the area that you have the most pain about, you know, the most stress about that you can make a little headway with. Find one thing at a time that you can address. I like to start with a client, find out what's really stressing them out, and kind of sort things, what I call a macro sort. So put like with like um, and put areas together where they can easily put something in the trash can, easily put something in recycle, easily put something in shred, easily put something in donate. If they want to sell it, easily put something in sell. So kind of setting up those stations, I can easily make, hold something one time, make that decision and put it in the bin where it goes. What I like to do for people with a really messy closet is I start with what we call, in the industry we call it the floor drobe. Because if your closet's really messy, you probably don't have your entire floor of your closet cleared off and you need to have great pathways everywhere you organize. That one change right there makes it much easier because you feel a little better and you can safely and efficiently walk around the closet to look at everything else. When an organizer hears, well, I might need that someday, that's a little you know, red flag for us to say, okay, here's someone who's making a decision out of fear, not out of their current lifestyle. Just because someone gives you something doesn't mean you have to keep it. Somebody else who can really be enjoying it or someone who needs it is a better home for it than you just keeping it out of fear. We can very easily buy, have delivered, borrow, put a post on social media who has an extra one of these. It's easy to borrow something or have it quickly, quickly to your doorstep. I think that's really important is for people to give themselves permission to let go of things that they don't like, don't fit them, they've never used, and it'll allow you to have a manageable inventory in your home to manage. That is some great advice. I think that's one of my struggles is that I kind of get emotionally attached to things like, oh, this was a gift from mm -hmm. someone. I don't want to give it away, but I don't necessarily have a use for it. Yeah. And so it's kind of hard and yeah. it does stress me out. I, I totally get it. My husband and I downsized from a house to an apartment. It was the best decision we could have made, but it forced us to really think about, okay, what do you want? Because we're going down way uh, lower in square right. footage than we had been. And so we had to give up a lot of stuff. It was very freeing. It's very freeing to get rid of stuff that you really don't use. Look at it and be like, have I really used that even in the last month or two? If not, eh. You know, you know, I just upsized to a new apartment <laughs> just a little by a little bit. And uh, I did not do quite as much cleaning as you all did because I was kind of in a hurry to right. pack. And I was just like, OK, we got to get this done. And yeah. now I need to do that. Yeah, so. whatever you can do just to free yourself a little bit of stuff. I promise it will feel better. So that's your encouragement <laughs> this morning.